Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's workshop and paint studio and uh, we're carrying on with our uh, Land Raider tank and our demonic mouth. Now what's coming up next is we're going to start really distorting the armor plating and the uh, shape of everything here. I want to start putting in some eyes as you may see on the thumbnail and um, it's going to all be done in layers again um, just because it's going, to, it's going to work out easier that way but we want to really transition the metal and the flesh um, do ignore that ball on the top I was mucking about trying to figure out where I was going to place eyeballs. And firstly I'm going to start blending the lips to the uh, rest of the uh, model. And if you remember last time we just stuck the lips on, uh, which means there's gaps behind them. So this is a really thin, like one and a half millimeter thick piece of green stuff. As you can see it's like a little, it's really thin, it's like paper thin so it's really flimsy and it's easy to uh, blend into the top of the lips there. So I'm going to lay that down and uh, I'm going to use a lot more tools as I'm um, getting more confident with each tool. This one's a, it's like a spoon pretty much with a uh, round surface on the other side. I end up just using my fingers for this just to blend that in um, and the green stuff you know, intertwines in between those twists that we put in the mouth. I want to start poking this part down and uh, then I want to cut it away so it's got a nice sharp edge. But um, this isn't actually going to be an armor part, this is going to be more flesh because I've decided that f the left hand part where the light is, I'm going to build that up so it's really distorted and um, I'm showing you what that is, that's a um, really handy tool that I've took to using quite a bit for getting straight edges, it's basically a little blade. Um, but you can go straight down with it like a chisel so uh, that enables you to um, remove bits of green stuff without them you know, getting pulled away or stuck. As you can see I'm building up the inside Nurgle layer again and uh, manipulating it and it's going to get taller towards the left of the screen and uh, you'll see why that is in a bit because we're going to rebuild a part of this tank to really make it look distorted. As with all of, all of these green stuff videos, it's all to do with layering and we want this bottom layer here to be as distorted as possible and as uneven as possible so when we do put the armor on with a smooth surface it really contrasts. It'll uh, really help both parts stand out differently as we um, when we get around to painting it, which I may do a tutorial for it once it's all finished. I mean it's going to be a long project. So we're just building that up so um, the lips don't look too pronounced at this point. And this is a good technique to use um, all your leftover green stuff for guys. Get a little tub, any leftover bits, roll them into little balls and put them on there to dry. See I was going to, I'm going to take out that part there, um, the light thing and then put eyeballs in there so they look like they're coming out of the model. You don't have to paint them as eyeballs, you could probably do them as warts. And uh, I do apologise for the length of this video, it was a lot longer. I. Uh, we really went savage with the editing and cut most of this out. Um, I've been working on this most of the week. See, I wanted to put this coming from the underneath, uh, which is how we did uh, Fluffy, if you remember. Start with the inside, work your way out. But because the Land Raider is already built, I'm not able to do this very well. Um, there was a lot of footage, me, footage of me just mucking about with that. But what we're going to do instead now is we're going to build up this um, flap, the hinge for the door. We're going to rebuild that and re-sculpt the shape of it. I could have done it with green stuff, but that would have been a lot of work trying to get a perfectly sharp edge with green stuff. So this will be the inside bit of the hinge. Um, it's, just a, it's just a bit of sprue of uh, some Chaos chain swords. It just happens to be the uh, right thickness for it. And what I want to do is have it looking like the hinge is lifting up slightly. Or this um, immense amount of pressure coming from underneath the tank, and pushing it and distorting it out of the way. At the moment, I'm just dry fitting it. You may be able to tell at the top of that piece, I uh, filed it down so it looks like the one on the right because they're not perfectly straight all the way around. That was just done with a um, nail file, really. Um, you'd be surprised how useful those things are. So if you, if your girlfriend or anyone's got any of those, go nick them from a from the bathroom or wherever she keeps them because they're really good for getting a nice clean filing on uh, resin. And um, I didn't have another piece big enough so I just got two bits of sprue 
and they've got an interlocking angle anyway when you flip them around. So we're going to glue those together and we're going to use this to make the top part of that hinge. And it's it's about the same thickness, so what I'll do is I'll uh, get a file again, just smooth them off a bit. And I will also then get a Dremel multi-tool using the grinding disc to uh, take a little notch out of the bottom of it. That way the uh, hinge can fit in. And there you go, I mean that's a pretty good replacement part for that bit. As you can see I cut the skull off the hinge that I'm going to change as well. And they fit in pretty well. Took a little while with the um, sanding and filing and everything, but now we have a uh, spare part. And what we can do is really distort that. And when we distort that, we can start really building up the green stuff around it so it looks very, very warped. And at this point, I've just super glued that in place. And it, look, it looks a bit random at the moment, but as we get towards the end of the video, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing. What we're going to do is build green stuff up around the edges of that so it looks like the front part is uh, ever so slightly twisted and more swollen than it should be. And like I said, that's to uh, stop the teeth, I mean the um, lips looking so pronounced and not attached to anything. We needed to build up the back. But I also wanted to keep a bit of the, bit of the Land Raider showing through. So this bit of green stuff here is just me pushing it under that bond where it's been super glued to uh, stop it moving around. I don't want the hinge going anywhere while I'm sculpting. And I'm generally trying to keep it um, as flat as possible. I do want a smooth surface to work with on most of this. As you can see I've started filling in the other side with it. And I'm just mucking about with the uh, shapes again. A lot of this is all poking around, seeing what I can do. I'm also experimenting a lot, uh, experimenting a lot with these new tools. Not new tools, tools I don't usually use, I should say. And I decided that this bit now, being as flat as it is, was going to have the original armor design built along it. So on the underneath, I'm just prepping that, getting all the um, Nurgle shapes in there. It may not even, like by the time it's done, you may not be able to even see those bits if you work, but them being there while you're sculpting, um, it does enable you to sort of look at your project and think, okay, I do want a bit of that showing through, and if you don't, you can easily cover it back up. It's best to have it there and not need it. And uh, this is the part I dremeled out uh, beforehand, you know, that I said wasn't glued too well um, on the last video. And I want to bring that out so the flesh is coming out of that vehicle and, and across that hinge. Sort of blending it all together so it looks like a living entity. And I, I was quite happy with the way that started to look. And then pushing it back into the uh, Dremel parts. That will get more work done on it as well. As we're going to build up that eye socket around there and have all the eyes sat in. And uh, build up the armor around the eyes so they look like they're sat inside of it. And again, I mean, there's a lot of prep work here, but for those who haven't seen the other videos, I'm covering them anyway. This is um, the same way we did skin on Fluffy. So we've got that first layer that's dried up underneath. And um, now we're going to put in another layer of uh, Nurgle stuff. Because as I said in the first Nurgle video, you don't want to put stuff down and just stab it with a pin and be like, it's done. But if you stretch it like this and you uh, poke it around, what you'll get is... Um, the raised parts of green stuff will start to stretch and distort naturally on their own like twisted skin. All you really have to do is uh, move the holes around. As long as you keep it thin, this will always work. It uh, gives a real natu unnatural sort of look to the flesh. And I want to keep that part there as flat as possible. I want that to still look like um, the armor. And uh, here's some footage of me really, really struggling to uh, get that to go in from behind because the shape of the Land Raider Although, towards the end of the video, before the next video, I'm going to uh, cut the bottom out and uh, start working that way. Uh, I can always fix the bottom up with some plastic card and green stuff. So, we've got something in there, in the eye, for me to start working on. But like I said, I make these balls and I'm probably going to make a little pot of green stuff teeth with all the leftovers. Because you always get a little bit of green stuff left over. So you may as well prep it for some other green stuff project. Just picking out different shaped, um, not different shape, different sized eyes, sorry. 
You could probably do different shaped eyes, like the uh, small video we did on eyes, put eyelids on it. But I just wanted something more spider-like, or... I want the whole thing to look really horrific, some like weird bug thing. Basically, I'm just resting those in there and uh, poking them around. But what you'll find when you make these green stuff balls and let them dry is one side is ever so slightly flat where it's squashed under its own weight. That's the side you want to push into the green stuff so you don't see it. And that will leave everything else, you know, nice and smooth and more looking like an eyeball. This was um, extremely fiddly because I couldn't get behind to push it back out. Um, but I do touch it up and fix it later as I do with most of these projects. And you know, I, I do realise we're 11 minutes in and we've not started doing any of the armour yet, but there was a lot of prep uh, for this design. I'm going to start building up a eyelid. Now, I, <coughs> how to explain that? Why I'm doing this eyelid, I'll explain the other bit. Above the eyelid, there is that um, sharp edge in between the eyelid and the hatch, and I want to bring that down later on in a diagonal angle over all this flesh that I'm building up now making that look like armor so it really looks like it's protruding so the eyeballs are protruding I decided to take those eyes out because they look like one eye surrounded by a few which had a sort of a symmetrical pattern I uh, took those eyes out I left the back green stuff in and I filled it with a, a different set of eyes that was just an aesthetic thing I just wanted it to look a bit different and now I'm showing you where we're going to start building up this metal plating. Okay, so let's finally get on to putting the build of the armor up. I'll be using this tool a lot to get lo like lovely straight edges. And I also found it's really good for flattening things out as well. I want that top edge of that green stuff towards the eyes as a smooth and as sharp edged as possible so it looks like the uh, part from underneath has now twisted and switch switched up over the land raider i do apologize for the exposure on it there it's, it's wet green stuff so the light's reflecting off the water on it so you want some sharp edges on this and some of it we're just going to blend back into the skin so that way there's no real way of telling where it starts and where it finishes you'll only be able to tell that by the paint job but the paint job it's going to get is um, the coat of oil and rust and that paint job particularly blends really really well together the colours between armour and flesh see I want that part as well there to be straight so I'm using the uh, triangle pinhead Piece. I don't know what any of these sculpting tools are called. If you know what each of them are called, um, drop us a link that explains what they are. Or, you know, tell us in the comments. Now I'm going to put another piece of armour on the other side. But what I'm going to do is leave a gap. Because we want this Nurgle that we've been doing to start showing through the underneath. Again, using different types of flat tool um, to just rub the surface till it's nice and smooth or as smooth as I can get it and if it's not as smooth as I want it at the end of the project what I'll do is I'll use a um, milliput really watered down and start filling in those uh, little lumps that are left in there once I've um, got that done I want to keep that sharp edge again so I want to go back to the other tool and take that away so you want the uh, bottom edge to blend in but you want the top edge to be sharp and this way um, it'll look like the the Nurgle and the um, rock just attached to the underneath of the armor and just drip down also find this tool is really good for um, getting a nice smooth edge a nice flat surface sorry it's been a long day and then I'm gonna start blending bits of the shape into the uh, flesh at the top of the eye hopefully when I start putting the next few bits on you'll see what I'm actually doing now I'm using a really pointy tool and um, it's the thinnest one I've got I think and I'm just poking in some cracks this is the other side of the same tool just poking in some cracks for the armor and that's not only gonna show that it's um, a solid piece it's also going to remind me that that's a bit of armour and not to sculpt it to something else. 
Plus it's also going to break up that flat surface with something a bit more brittle as everything else is really fleshy. As you can see I'm trying to line up both of those bits that are going to be armour so it looks like it's um, snapped open. Then of course flat surface tool to uh, really sharpen that edge. This tank uh, the front so far has taken absolutely ages. I also find myself lifting up the um, surface as well so it looks like it's coming away. Okay, so we've got two parts there that look like armour. I want to fill that bottom part in but before I do so I'm going to put a, um, another third part in there and uh, work on that some more. So I really want it to look like it's swelling up over the eyes and it's still got armour plating. We'll be working all the way to the top, I think. We will finish the video at the point where I've uh, gone over the top of the eyeballs to really make those look distorted. Not this part, this is more Nurgle being added over that. There's going to be like two layers of Nurgle to this and then the armour plating for it. And as you can see on the rest of the model there, I've added some more of the smooth, flat, surface green stuff that's going to add it, be used as armour. I'm just going to keep blending those two parts together. I really enjoyed sculpting around the eyes because it really started to look horrific and distorted at that point. And as, um, as I'm going to have to do an entire series on these, I'm going to keep bringing them out on Mondays. Um, I would have liked to have got more done for it, for this video, but um, I just didn't have time. I mean, I mean, this one's coming out on Tuesday again as well. And as per the other video, we're, we're blending the top of that with the back to squash it down, because that's going to get covered up. And I wanted to actually have some of the flesh here from the joining Nurgle blend into the eye. So when I paint that, it looks like part of the eye is like stretched up into the rest of the tank. There you go, we've now got sort of a hood going on for the eyes and it sort of looks like they're coming out of there. Sort of building these armour bits up again. Or I just need to put a bit in there really. Um, to really define all those edges and the actual armour piece. And we need a bit over the top as well so it uh, all looks swollen up and distorted. I need to come up with a design for the guns that go on the front as well, um, which I haven't done yet. But now we're going to add a uh, second row of this green stuff, almost as if it's got two eyelids or something. I do enjoy doing this sort of stuff. Um, reminds me of some weird Geiger or Salvador Dali sort of artwork. Those two artists were a great inspiration. I used to love drawing and painting, but uh, I could I could see that this is sort of inspired by that. And as you can see, that regular plain eye that we had earlier, which was just a bunch of eyes, is now really does look like it's a bunch of eyes coming out of some skin and really brings in that shape. Now I did struggle here to um, do the top part and make that perfectly flat, so I may end up distorting it later. But the idea there is to flatten that and then pull it down over the rest and then give it a, another sharp hard edge. As you can see it's sort of protruding forward and then we're going to twist it down. And uh, put some cracks and everything in it. I think for the next video, or one of the next videos for this project, I'm going to spray the tank a single colour so we can uh, really see what's going on because all the different tones of green stuff really do not help with the uh, the video. What I'm doing here again is using my uh, small pointing tool and I'm just going to start putting cracks in in a minute where uh, I feel they'll be necessary and then distort the rest of the shape down. There will be a lot of fiddling around with this back and forth. Um, Anyone got any ideas on what I should do with the front guns? They've got nothing done to them yet, so if you've got any ideas, we'll uh, definitely do that on video as well if it's good. 
Um, and the back's going to be even more horrific than the front, hopefully. And there we have it. That's not as straight as I'd want it, but I can touch it up later. I did run out of time for this video. So you can see we've got four pieces of armor there. Five if you want to count the top part. And we've added in the eyes and we've distorted the front of the uh, hinges. Uh, we're going to make that look much more swollen in the next video. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you like this. If you do, hit like. Leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.